go. Hello, my dear students. And today we're gonna to do a quick lab where we're going to continue on writing the chemical names and the chemical formulas for some substances only this time they're going to be substances that we create in a chemical reaction because our next unit and our next topic is chemical reactions so we're going to make some new compounds we're going to start with two solutions mix them together and make a third compound in what's called a double displacement uh, reaction or a substitution reaction or a precipitation reaction and look at some new compounds. So let me get my lab coat and my safety glasses. And unlike the old days where we would take a couple of compounds and a couple of test tubes and mix the test tubes together and then we would spin them out in a centrifuge like this device up here it's called a spinet centrifuge and collect the precipitate we don't waste a lot of equipment and a lot of chemicals to demonstrate the same principles now we do something called um micro scale chemistry and we're going to do our reactions on top of a reaction surface. It's a waterproof surface. It's a sheet protector. Uh, you know, when we started this, we started doing it in, in micro tighter plates. I'll show you one next time. And using very small volumes. Now we use even smaller volumes and we've moved completely to this. So if you read the instructions, it says put a drop of each solution on I'm gonna wear my safety glasses. I'm gonna be careful not to get any of these solutions on me. We're working with some toxic solutions like um, lead, strong bases like sodium hydroxide, uh, potentially toxic materials like silver nitrate, although when I was a baby, when I was first born, they put silver nitrate in my eye. But I'm gonna take this silver nitrate and I'm sorry I put on my reading glasses. Let's see if I can get my safety glasses with side shields on it. It's always stored in a brown bottle because it is light sensitive. And I'm going to, in this row here, that silver nitrate, put a drop of silver nitrate in each of these squares, silver nitrate. And we'll learn about the solubility of different substances. Silver compounds and lead compounds are not known for being particularly um, soluble. So the next one is lead nitrate. I'm gonna put a drop of lead nitrate and because I'm handling lead and lead compounds, I'm going to wash my hands when I'm done with this lab. The next up and down row is copper sulfate. You can see the blue tint for the copper ions, the copper two ions, copper two sulfate. And the next one is magnesium sulfate, also known as Epsom salt. So I'm gonna put a drop in each square where it's indicated. And the last one is the iron three chloride with its yellow, I don't know, rusty tint, but uh, it always looked rusty to me. I guess that's not truly the color of rust, but if you look at the bottle, most bottles of iron chloride get that um, on them. Even a glass bottle would have that on it. Next, I'm gonna go across um, with what? Oh, the iron chloride also goes across in the first horizontal row. So let me put a second drop. And there are different ways of doing this. You know, if it's a white precipitate, we wanna see it on a back, black background. If it's a black precipitate or dark precipitate, we wanna see it on a white background. So what we have is a very thick set of bars in the shape of an X 
here so that when we mix them together, we can compare. We'll be working with some other reaction grids later this year that are have a diagonal. So one half is white and one half is um, covered with black ink. But um, I'm going to add the potassium iodide. I'm getting a big bubble, so I'm trying to get it out. And I made a bigger drop than I wanted there. See if I can pull some of that out. We'll just leave it like that. The next is sodium hydroxide, the base. Remember anything with hydroxide is a base, OH minus ion, anion, polyatomic anion. So I'm gonna put some big old drops on there. They beat up because of the cohesive and high surface tension of water. The next row calls for sodium carbonate. It's not sodium bicarbonate. This is truly sodium carbonate. And I'm going to add a drop of it to each reaction square. And when we're looking to see if a reaction has occurred, we're gonna be looking for one of three things. Formation of a precipitate, um, formation of gas bubbles, evolution of the gas, or a change in color, usually indicating an oxidation reduction reaction. But what we'll be seeing mainly today is the formation of a precipitate, although we will see some bubbles and some gas being evolved in a couple of these. It may just be heating up. I have a fingerprint or something on this one, and I have a, ga uh, a line of um, the solution spreading out. That's very unusual, but I'm going to try and do these in order, but I may have to move down to that one to do it. So what I do now is I move my drops together and mix them with my toothpick. That's the silver nitrate and lead, I mean an iron chloride. This is the lead nitrate and the um, iron chloride, iron three chloride. Here's silver nitrate and potassium iodide together, forming a precipitate and a color change. Here is, this one's always interesting. Uh, you zoomed in on that. This one produces a brilliant canary yellow precipitate. The lead salts are beautiful. That's why they were used in paint so much. But, let me get this up here. It's getting too close to my other sample there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one like that get it away but of course lead is toxic so we no longer use these brilliant beautiful lead pigments here's sodium hydroxide with silver nitrate you may recognize that color as kind of a sepia brown that's the color of some uh, old photographs they use silver salts watch the lead nitrate now You'll see a pretty white precipitate. It may take a while to uh, develop. We'll see it in the next one. Copper is turning a more intense blue. And if you look, it's kind of gelling up. It's, um, the water is gotten thicker. Magnesium sulfate and sodium hydroxide should make magnesium hydroxide also known as milk of magnesia. I probably need a higher concentration of magnesium than 10th molar to get a real obvious precipitate. And here's iron hydroxide. Wow, that beautiful rust color. Um, sodium carbonate with silver nitrate is gonna make silver carbonate. 
And here should be a nice, pretty white precipitate with our lead. Some of those lead paints had beautiful, brilliant white pigments in them that, like I said, were made great paints, but unfortunately, uh, they made toxic paints, so we don't use those pigments anymore. Here's copper sulfate with sodium carbonate. We're gonna make copper carbonate and magnesium sulfate with sodium carbonate. Going to make a bit of a solution there, and I've already mixed that one up. So I'll go over here, sodium phosphate with silver nitrate, lead nitrate, with sodium phosphate, we're gonna make lead phosphate. Should be a pretty and, and a white, white uh, precipitate as opposed to some of these that are off-white or yellow tinged. Here's copper with copper um, sulfate with sodium phosphate. I'm making uh, copper phosphate. And Here's mag sulfate with sodium phosphate. I'm making magnesium phosphate. And finally, the iron chloride with sodium phosphate. I'm making iron phosphate. And it'll be a much finer, paler precipitate than the other three. I'm going to write down the names of these and do the um, discussion in a little screencast later. But I want to show you, if we can zoom in on this, what happens when you let these dry, you can see clearly the precipitates, and some of them that didn't seem to have one actually do. This is magnesium hydroxide. Um, you can see the circle here where the precipitate has formed, and magnesium hydroxide is insoluble, and it's also known as milk of magnesia, because that insoluble precipitate, when you shake it up, becomes a suspension throughout the liquid and looks like milk. And so that's where your milk of magnesia that you can buy comes from, and this is what it is. We just made milk of magnesia or magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium is group two, it's always plus two. OH is a polyatomic ion that's always minus one, so it's Mg, parenthetically, OH2. We don't need to add a Roman numeral because magnesium is always plus two, so it, it will be magnesium hydroxide. And we will write those answers and do what we did before. Instead of looking at the compounds and me giving you test tubes full of them from our chemical stock room, this time, at least the face-to-face -face students, will have made them themselves and then we'll go and name them and practice our naming and writing of formulas some more and I've also introduced a type of reaction that we're going to be studying. Later this week, we'll be studying uh, some mathematical, quantitative aspects of chemical reactions, chemical solutions, chemical quantities, and then we will move into the different types of reactions. So until next time, uh, stay safe, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye now.